The car industry is going through another round of downsizing. First, we ditched our big truck-based SUVs for compact crossovers. And now a lot of buyers are ditching those and going to even smaller subcompact crossovers. The idea is that you get a lot of virtues of a crossover, but in a smaller, more affordable, and more fuel-efficient package. The Buick Encore is at the premium end of this class. It's a clear step up in terms of style and equipment and refinement compared to the Chevy Trax on which it's based, but it's not quite as luxurious or as expensive as subcompact crossovers from the likes of Mercedes-Benz and Audi. So where exactly does the Buick Encore fit in? How does it look? The Encore looks remarkably stylish. Its narrow, upright proportions are a little dorky, but the tidy nose and grille, stylish 18-inch wheels, and understated use of chrome lend it a premium look without going overboard. And I think this white frost tricoat paint is a pretty good match for the Encore's style. How's the storage? The Encore may be a crossover, but it's a really small crossover, so its trunk is also really small. What you notice, first of all, is that it's really pretty narrow. And I have to point out that with the back seats raised, there's less storage space here than in a Chevy Cruze hatchback. Now, if you pull out the cargo cover, you do have a little space to stack things up. And of course, like most crossovers, you can fold the rear seats down. But unlike most other crossovers we've tested, it's a two-step process to fold the back seats down. You have to lift up the front cushion first and then lower the seat back down. And to do so, you've got to move the front seat so far forward that you're probably not going to be too comfortable while you're driving. Once you do have those back seats down though, there's enough space that we should have no issue fitting our three new suitcases from away. Up front, storage is good but not great. You get two cup holders and the door pockets are pretty spacious. But this storage cubby in the center console isn't huge. The one here beneath the center stack is a little larger and it has the USB ports for plugging in your phone. And I also like that by my left knee there's this little other storage pocket. It's just about big enough to fit a 12 ounce beverage can. Is it roomy? As you'd expect for a tall vehicle like this, headroom is superb. I could wear an Abraham Lincoln style hat and still have plenty of space above the sunroof. But, as we pointed out before, if you're folding down the back seats to store lots of stuff, legroom up front isn't going to be great. In normal use it's fine, although it's worth noting that the Encore is a bit narrow up front, so it's easy to bump elbows with your passenger. There's a lot of adjustability in the driver's seat, but I am a little annoyed that although the lumbar, up, down, and fore aft movements are all electric, you still have to manually recline the seat back. As to the back seats, well, they're a bit tight on legroom and elbow room, though the headroom is fine. Still, the second row isn't great for adults on long journeys. How does the interior feel? It can be tough to turn an affordable car into a more luxurious car, and in this interior there is a lot that I saw in the Chevy Trax I was driving last week. But there are some elements that really do make this feel a little nicer. I really love the soft leather on the seats, the soft touch points on the dashboard and the steering wheel for so on. Things that I don't love so much would probably be some of the secondary controls. There's a lot going on with all these climate control buttons. I mean, the heated steering wheel buttons even jammed right here in the temperature knob. And the same for manipulating the trip computer. You have to twist and poke this left stalk as if it's a boppet. Is it well equipped? Even as standard, the Encore comes with goodies like a color trip computer, touchscreen infotainment system, push button start, on start, a backup camera, 18 inch wheels, and LED running lights. The extensive options list has pretty much any feature you'd want on your small crossover, including things like a sunroof, remote start, LED headlights, parking sensors, and active safety tech like blind spot, lane departure, and pre-collision warnings. How's the infotainment system? This 8-inch touchscreen comes standard and is great. It's quick, clear, and easy to use. It has satellite radio, Bluetooth audio, it can read your text messages aloud, and for an extra cost, it has navigation. The nav works well, but it's plain and simple graphics aren't the prettiest you can find in a modern car. If you have the appropriate subscriptions, the infotainment system can also provide a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot and provide traffic and weather information. There's also support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you prefer those interfaces. Oh, and I always have to applaud a touchscreen that still has physical knobs for the volume and tuning controls. Is it a good daily driver?
The Onco works really well as a daily driver because it's really quiet and comfortable and really small. So on the first part, Buick aces quietness on all of its cars. There's a lot of sound deadening, acoustic glass, a Bose active noise cancellation system. It's quiet in here. And the ride is very plush and compliant, maybe except over the worst impacts like going over railroad tracks. As to its compact size, that makes it a breeze to drive around the city. Anytime I park this car, I get out and I'm amazed at how much extra space I had around me. And you can dip through gaps in traffic, no problem at all. One thing I'll note is this engine does come with a stop-start feature to save fuel. You can't turn it off, which is the case in a lot of General Motors cars with stop-start, but the activation is so smooth and seamless that I don't really mind and I don't want to turn it off. Is it fun to drive? No, not really. But then again, no subcompact crossover is really that fun to drive. They're all about practicality and affordability. I mean, this Encore, like a lot of its competition, has pretty soft suspension, pretty dull steering, and even though it's got 153 horsepower from its turbo engine, it's not really all that quick. How's the fuel economy? If you get the base engine with front-wheel drive, the Encore returns a respectable 27 miles per gallon city and 33 highway. This test car is the least efficient model with the upgraded 153 horsepower engine and all-wheel drive, so it returns 26 MPG city and 31 highway. That's still pretty good for this class of car. How much is it? The Encore starts at around $24,000, and this particular premium all-wheel drive model is $36,000. But you don't need to spend that much. Playing around with the options list online, I built out a really nice Encore with all-wheel drive and lots of luxury features for just $30,000. What are the negatives? It's not all that spacious inside, and as we saw, it's kind of a pain to fold down the back seats to get more storage. It's also not that much fun to drive, and it's on the pricey side for subcompact crossovers. If you're looking for a car like this because you need a small, practical vehicle, you might want to think about just going with the regular Chevy Trax, or maybe even a Chevy Cruze hatchback instead. Who should buy it? There's a reason the Encore is Buick's best-selling model. It provides a lot of what we know crossover shoppers really want, things like a high seating position and available all-wheel drive. But within its class, it's not the most practical or spacious model, and it's also not the best value for money. If you can do without the chrome wheels and leather trim and other adornments like that on this Encore, you might be just as well served with the slightly cheaper Chevy Trax instead. Hey guys, if you liked this why buy, be sure to scroll down and click the like button. And if you have any questions about this car or any others we've reviewed, be sure to leave a comment below. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to ensure you'll get every why buy. We have a new one for you every single Thursday. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course at motor1.com.